In this lesson, we're, we're going to review how to find the number of solutions of an equation, and we're also going to solve linear quadratic systems. So remember, a system of equations just means multiple equations. So if we were looking at a graph of a system of equations, there'd just be multiple um, relations on that graph. A linear quadratic system means that the equations that we're looking at are of a parabola in a line. So a linear quadratic system, we're just looking at a line and a parabola in the same graph. So this question says determine the number of solutions to each linear quadratic system. So what this is really saying is how many points of intersection do these two have? So let's take a look at what this is going to look like graphically. And let's cheat and let's take a look on a graphing calculator. So we're going to use Desmos. And then we're going to figure out algebraically to come up with the same thing. So we're trying to find the number of solutions to this system. That means how many points of intersection will these two have? That's what solution is going to be in this context. So let's take a look at the parabola. So here's what our parabola is going to look like. And how about our line? Boom, there's our line. So here is our linear quadratic system. It consists of a parabola and a line. How many solutions are there? How many points of intersection are there between this parabola and this line? And there's exactly none. This doesn't intersect at all. So how can we figure this out algebraically? Well, if I want to find a point of intersection of two things, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to each other because remember, this just means y and this just means y. So we're checking when are the y's actually equal to each other. So let's check. Let's put them equal to each other. So if we set these equal to each other, negative 2x squared minus 2 equals 0.5x minus 1. We just got to ask ourselves, what tool can we use to solve this problem? Well, we can use the quadratic formula, or we could try factoring. So I see a decimal in there. I'm probably not, not going to try factoring, but I'm going to bring everything to one side to make my decision. So I'm going to bring everything to, let's bring everything to the right side. So I've got 0 is equal to negative 2x squared minus 2 plus 0.5x and then minus 1. If we simplify that, I've got negative 2x squared plus 0.5x, and then negative 2 minus 1 is going to be negative minus 3. All right, I'm not going to factor this guy because I see a decimal. I'm going to try the quadratic formula. So here's the thing. The question was not asking for what is the solution. So I don't need to use the quadratic formula at all. All I need is the number of solutions, and we know that is going to be based on the discriminant. So, so if you can't remember what the discriminant is, just remember, it's whatever's under the square root of um, our quadratic formula. This is going to determine if there's any solutions, two solutions, or one solution. So we know if whatever's underneath the square root is negative, well, you can't take the square root of a negative number, so there's going to be no solutions. If it's positive, well, we're going to get two solutions because we can take the square root of, t of a positive number, and then there's a little plus or minus in front, so we're going to get two solutions. And if, there's a, if this becomes exactly zero, we're going to be adding and subtracting zero, and it's going to give us just one solution. So let's put that into play for this question here. This question is asking for just determine the number of solutions. So all we need to check is that discriminant. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to check the value of b squared minus 4ac. So our b is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 squared minus 4. Our a value is negative 2, and our c value is negative 3. And we get an answer of negative 23.75. So that's what would be under the square root. Can we take the square root of this number? Of course not, because it's a square root, so that's an even root. We can't take the even root of a negative number, which means that there are no solutions, which we also prove graphically. There should be no solutions here. So our conclusion is because this discriminant is less than zero, there's no solutions. Let's try another one. Now we're going to check if this quadratic linear system has any solutions. So again, all we're doing is we're checking how many points of intersection does this line have with this parabola. So check on Desmos to check your answer, but let's just do it algebraically at first. How many solutions does this have? 
Well, to find a point of intersection, that means that, they're prob that the equations are equal, so we need to set them equal to each other. So we're checking when are these two graphs equal to each other, if they are ever equal to each other. So let's set their equations equal to each other and check. So I'm going to bring everything onto one side. I'll bring these guys to one side. So I've got 0 equal to negative 2x squared. Then I have plus x plus 3 minus 2x plus 5. And then I've got, if I simplify it, I've got x minus 2x, that's going to be negative x. And then 3 plus 5, that's going to be 8. So if this question is saying find the point of intersection, well, I know how to solve that. I can either try factoring or I could try the quadratic formula. But this question was saying how many solutions. So I don't need to solve this. I just need to check that discriminant. Check b squared minus 4ac and see what that guy equals. So I'm going to plug in my b. My b I know is negative 1. And I have my a is negative 2. And then my c is 8. So I can already tell, let me just fix this 8, it's going to drive me crazy. Okay, I can already tell that this is going to be positive. Why? Negative 4 times negative 2 is going to be a positive number times positive 8. This is all just going to be a big positive number. It's just 65. So if we take the positive and negative square root of 65, we're going to get two different answers, whatever the, the positive and negative root of 65 is. Therefore, we're going to get two solutions. So this should have two points of intersection. So because the discriminant is greater than 0, there's going to be two solutions. Check on Desmos right now. Plot this guy. Desmos does, sometimes doesn't like these letters. Just put in Y if you want to. And then plot this guy. And you should see it hits the problem and the line hit each other two times. Let's try another example. So this question says determine the number of roots of the problem below. What do roots mean? They just mean x-intercepts. So they... Uh, there's no number for me to plug in here, but if you read it carefully, if I'm looking for an x-intercept, I know that in order to find an x-intercept, I need to sub in y is equal to 0, or in this case, f at x is equal to 0. So to figure this out, I first have to plug in 0 for f at x. So I have 3, 0 equals 3x squared plus 3x plus 0 0.75. So now what do we do? It says not determine the roots, determine the x values. That would be, we would just use the quadratic formula. I wouldn't factor because I have this decimal. But it says the number of roots, determine the number of roots. So if I just want to find the number of solutions to this, the number of solutions to this, I know there could be two roots, no roots, or one root. All I'm going to do is check that discriminant. Anytime it just asks me to find the number, I can just check the discriminant. So my b value is 3. My A value is also 3, and my C value is 0 0.75. And I get exactly 0. What does that mean? Well, just think about it in our quadratic formula. If I were to use a quadratic formula, I'm going to have some number, let's say 2. And then I'm going to have plus or minus 0 all over some other number, let's say 3. So because we're adding and subtracting 0, 2 plus 0 and 2 minus 0 is still 2. Now these two numbers I made up completely, so it doesn't come from here. But if we're adding and subtracting 0, we're still just left with this original number. So we're not going to have two answers here. We're just going to have one answer. So this means that there's going to be one solution. And in particular, the question said the number of roots. There's going to be one root. So because the discriminant is equal to 0, there is exactly one solution, or in this case, one root. Let's just quickly take a look at what that looks like at, on Des, in Desmos. So I have Desmos open. I'm going to plot our parabola that we just found. There it is. 3x squared plus 3x plus 0 0.75. We were solving for the number of x-intercepts, so we subbed in y is equal to 0. And guess what? Our parabola shows exactly what we found. We have one x-intercept at exactly negative 0.5. Our solution, we didn't solve for that negative 0 0.5. What we were solving for is the number of answers, or in this case, roots, and we got that answer, just one.